This is Fantasy Basel, the biggest comic convention in Switzerland and one of the largest pop culture events in Europe. Let's do two full cosplays and go here. I decided on the White Rabbit of the Netflix adaptation of Devil May Cry. See, we had this brilliant idea less than four weeks before this convention started. Late night disasters, last minute redesigns, and a sword that literally fell apart last minute. So here we are now. We have tickets for tomorrow and I'm still not finished. Let's see how far this rabbit hole goes. I really, really love the character of the White Rabbit, the antagonist of the series. I loved his mix of like classiness with his like suit, but also this eerie mask and I loved his sword. As always, when you do cosplays, the first thing you need is reference images. I already have this um, coat he has. So you know this coat that has like two flaps down there where you're like piano players were there? The sword is massive. It has runes in it, it glows. So I want my sword to glow as well. I, I don't want to just do it with color. I want to have electronics in there. So I already started designing the electronics parts because I have 17 days left to finish that all. We currently have 8th of May and this cosplay is needed on 31st of May. So what I did, I already ordered the foam latex um, rabbit snot, you could say. It is made in Canada and I hope it arrives on time. Uh, the ears I will actually manufacture myself and all of the other masks. Uh, I, I don't have the parts here yet. So, we are back. So the first thing I wanted to do is to get the actual sword done because that's the bulk of this costume or like not the bulk, but the hardest piece when it comes to engineering. So I designed this sword completely from scratch. It's split in two because it has a lot of electronics in. So this character, the White Rabbit, in the anime adaptation on Netflix at least, he has a sword that it's called the Force Edge. But this sword has special capabilities. As soon as he inserts the gem in the anime, a rune pattern shows on the sword and that is the activated version of the Force Edge and then it's a sort of spider. But I wanted to have this activation possibility. So what I actually did, I put the rune pattern in here as a recess about a millimeter deep. And you can see that there is more grooves going along this rune pattern and some holes. For that, I use my new favorite kind of LED. I think you might remember that out of the video I did with the award, with the DNA spiral one. Really a cool project, you have to watch it. I will link it in the description down below or maybe I will do one of those cards up here. And these uh, light up very uniformly and very bright with just three volts of power, which is awesome because this one will be battery powered, of course. So I put in these recesses to actually have them in here. And my plan is to have a resin cast on top. And then when you put on the light, the runes will appear. So actually when you put in the gym, at uh, gym, gem. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I designed also the rest. This is our hill and actually in here will be the battery pack. We have all these channels that we now have to fill with cable. We have to solder everything together. Okay, let's get to the fun part of action. Okay. Ah, oh, I forgot. Ah, oh, fuck. I stopped. I forgot forward voltage. You know, it's... I put them in series. Okay, guys. <laughs> I messed up. I designed the whole thing correctly, I would say. I have basically minus and plus down at the plate. And then I designed like an elaborate circuit to loop that through and put them all in series because I thought I simplify the circuit and it goes up one side, down one side. And so both plate sides have one cable coming out and stuff like that. What I didn't take into consideration and Ruben just explained that to me is forward voltage. All the six LED strips in series that would take up not three volts. I would need about 30 volts. 2000 years later. So, I came up with a solution, and with I, I mean Ruben. 
because Ruben actually is an electronics engineer, so he knows shit like that. So we rewired the whole thing. And now we decided like my, my handle has space for four AA batteries. What I can do is like wire them differently. My design allows that to be six volts. So we wired this. Basically what we've done now, we have parallels nearly everywhere except two of those. So that should work. And now let me get, crank up my power supply to six volts. And minus plus, fingers crossed. Oh, output and yay. You see the upper part lights up. Why only the upper part though? I, ha I still have to connect them down here. So I only have one coming out, man. I hope this was the only impasse we see. <laughs>Okay, now the hard part begins, uh, looping through. I already sorted the connection of this loop. Now there's only one loop left. I want to test it, so I attached it. Start the light. So everything lights up on this side, except this one string. And everything lights up on this side, except this one string. So when I connect that, all the rest should light up if I did everything right. Yes! Yay! Everything lights up. Awesome! Perfect. So I know that's the last connection I have to solder and I only have to solder that after I put the plate together. That's why I looped it through. So now the hard and scary part, glue up. And I have to make sure that all the cables are in position because I can't open it up after that anymore. I tested it once again after I glued down all the cables. So here I have about five minutes to get everything together before it hardens completely. I'm a little bit nervous because that was a lot of work, a lot of printing, a lot of electronics, a lot of soldering, problem solving. Okay, moment of truth. The clue up is finished, looking good. Because if not, I have a serious issue because I, I can't rip that apart. I basically would have to start fresh. Yeah! Yes, yes, yes. Look at that, like, holy shit, it works, it glows, it does light up, it's, I don't know, I'm out of adjectives, it works! So, here comes the next challenge, marrying the handle with the blade, because the problem is the blade sits in the handle, of course, it has to, but my cabling goes then to here where it attaches to my contact plate to my batteries. So that's the last bit of electronic. The problem is I can't solder and put both sides on because that's already glued up. So I have to figure out a way how to do it. So I will probably do that side first. I have to figure out how to get them there while I glue up and stuff and pull. Maybe I'll do it like that. And then I can cut it short. Okay. It fucking works. Yes. Everything lights up. Woo. Zwei. 2.5 amps. Exactly. Yes. Woo. -hoo -hoo. Okay, all the electronics are in and the next step is resin casting. One clue of this sort will be that we have the purple resin and then on top of it I will apply the metal finish. So my idea is we go on to UV resin instead. I got some fast UV curing clear resin here. So the thing is why a epoxy cast would be hard to do is because of the blade edge. I have slanted surfaces even in my resin cast. So the first order is let's see if we can even pigment it to a point where it is distinctively purple, but also still see-through. The lighting is half decent. I don't have time to set up lights. I'm like 
late, late, late. I was out with uh, food poisoning for like nearly a week and now I have seven days left. And bad news, my experiment with the resin failed. Like you see, I, I tried it, you see, I, I already tried to cover it. While grinding, it just starts to come loose from the sword itself. Like it does not adhere to it. I can just pull it out. Come on, go away. Like, yeah, I gave up on this one, on this version, but I already came up with a new one. It's currently printing. I redrew the whole sword, the whole electronics, everything from scratch, but I think I made it way easier. I will need half as much LEDs and half as much everything here. So this is a prototype. So I decided to print the sword in black directly, so I can just wet sand it and go directly with my chrome paint on it. And I also have a translucent material here. Uh, this is pink, I'm waiting for purple. And inside, like I have basically a layer of silk PLA around it. And I did test pieces, little cubes, and the silk inside helps tremendously. It bounces the light left and right when you shine it in and it basically lights up everything much more evenly and it gets brighter a lot. So I tried it with just black and then I tried it with a silver and it, it's a good difference. <clears throat> I also don't want to see my LED stripes again. So what I actually did, I covered wherever the LED stripe is. So apparently my microphone, apparently my microphone died in the last recording. So that's why I'm on wire right now. So what I was saying is like, I put this little blocker up uh, top and I angled the top. Okay, I hope my microphone held up this time and I hope my camera is not out. <laughs> Holy. Okay, let's go. Okay, it is the weekend before our Comic-Con, before Fantasy Basel, and I have nothing. I have jack shit. So my blade failed, I showed you yesterday. The new blades are already printing right now. I showed you this, it works fine. I now restarted it with the purple material. I got it in time, luckily. And one thing I haven't mentioned so far is his artificial heart. And so, here goes nothing. Let's. Get baby. I like actually that it is not that uniform, that it kind of has this shimmery thingy going on because that looks a little bit like a weird form of blood and like canonically that is demon blood. So it would look a little different. So I actually like the color a lot. Whoa. Yay! Woo! It really, it looks awesome. This actually looks like some kind of goo or like demon blood. My blade is finished. Came out very nice. Now I need to glue the pieces together to put the electronics in before I can do the final glue up. I did all the wiring. <sighs> That's how it should look like. Everything neat and nice. I have two cables coming out. This fits perfectly on here. So now it's time for the final glue up.
Most people don't have industrial 3D printers at home. That's why I'm excited to announce our partnership with one of the most competitively priced and high quality manufacturers out there. PCBWay. PCBWay is very renowned for their PCB manufacturing capabilities. They also offer industrial grade 3D printing and with worldwide shipping it will show up within days on your doorstep. I don't understand why they always do that in white because you can see all the stains on it. Like why don't they use a color where you don't see... Oh, well yeah you want to see your colors. Uh, we cut that out I would say. So now to the biggest commitment of the costume. Every last resort, suffocation, no breathing. 